We especially welcome all visitors who are with us today. Our celebrant this afternoon is Father Corey. Please stand. Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us be set the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hands of his foes. With riotment and torture, let us put this just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. 
and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but, you, but do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. We gather today on the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the United States in 2021, this Sunday has also been designated as Catechetical Sunday, an annual opportunity for us to reflect on the role that each person plays by virtue of baptism in handing on the faith and being a witness to the gospel. In the Diocese of San Diego, we are engaged in a process of 
Eucharistic renewal, an opportunity for all of us to come to a deeper and renewed understanding of the gift of the Eucharist in our lives as Catholic Christians. Last Sunday, we were reminded that the Eucharist is a direct, personal encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Eucharist, the body and blood, soul and divinity, really the whole of Christ, is truly, really, and substantially present and contained. Christ, God and man, makes himself entirely present to us. The Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life, which means that everything that has happened in our lives this week leads up to the celebration of the Eucharist, and everything that is to follow in our lives in the coming week will flow from our celebration of the Eucharist today. Our total existence as Catholic Christians is about this continuing dynamic of our lives, leading up to the Eucharist and then flowing from it week in and week out. In this way, we become one with God and are joined together with the whole of the people of God on earth and in heaven. This week, I want to reflect with you upon what it means when we say that the Eucharist is the sacrificial memorial of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection by which we have redeemed. Essentially, when we share in the Eucharist, you and I share in the very sacrifice of Christ and the reality of the Paschal Mystery. That term, Paschal Mystery, sounds difficult to understand at first, maybe even a bit mysterious, but it's not hard to grasp. Simply stated, when we refer to the Paschal Mystery, we refer to the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And through the gift of the Eucharist, God continues to invite us into a deeper relationship with him in Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit, so that we can eventually say with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But even before Christ instituted the Eucharist at the Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus was teaching about the Paschal Mystery. Did you hear it in today's Gospel? He didn't explicitly use those words, Paschal Mystery, but the mystery is there. Listen again. The disciples were on a journey through Galilee, and St. Mark writes, he was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. The scripture scholar Dr. John Bergsma calls these words of Jesus striking and full of curious ironies. He goes on to say in his commentary on the gospel passage for today that for once, Jesus does not teach in parables or figures of speech, but blunt language. He describes how he is going to suffer and to die. And despite this, the disciples did not understand the saying. How ironic. How much plainer could Jesus be? But they just don't get it. And... As in a classroom, no one wants to raise their hand and be exposed as the student who doesn't understand. So no one asks Jesus what he means. They all just nod in agreement and continue taking notes. What was important to the disciples was actually not important at all and was actually a distraction. Rather than trying to understand what Jesus was teaching them, Mark recalls that they were discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. So engrossed were they with their own greatness that they could not see the greatness of the Son of Man in their midst and hear the invitation to live one of the many ironies of gospel living. If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. As with the disciples, so too with us. We are invited to live deeply with God in Christ Jesus, 
but in order to do so, we must hear the invitation, understand what is being asked of us, and set aside any distractions on the way that would keep us from this singular task to live the Paschal mystery, to allow the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, in short, the totality of Jesus, to live in me. What does it mean to say that the Mass is a sacrifice? We hear that term frequently, the sacrifice of the Mass. The Mass is a sacrifice in the sense that when it takes place, Jesus Christ, through the bishop or priest celebrating the Mass, makes present sacramentally his saving sacrificial death on the cross by which he redeemed us from our sins. The Eucharistic sacrifice is the memorial of Christ's redeeming death. The term memorial in this context is not simply a remembrance of past events. It is a making present in a sacramental manner, the sacrifice of the cross of Christ and his victory. When the church celebrates the Eucharist, the memorial of her Lord's death and resurrection, this central event of salvation becomes really present and the work of our redemption is carried out. The Eucharistic sacrifice is offered to adore and to thank God, to pray for all our needs and to gain pardon for our sins. It would be a mistake then to think that every celebration of the Eucharist is a new or different sacrifice. In reality, the sacrifice of the cross and the sacrifice of the Eucharist are one and the same sacrifice. The priest and the victim, Jesus Christ, are the same. Only the manner of offering is different in a bloody manner on the cross, in an unbloody manner in the Eucharist. The sacrificial character of the Holy Eucharist is manifested in the very words of institution. We hear them at every Mass, don't we? This is my body which is given for you, and this is the new covenant in my blood that will be shed for you. The sacrifice of the cross and the sacrifice of the Eucharist are one and the same sacrifice. In what way does the Church participate in the Eucharistic sacrifice. In the Eucharist, the sacrifice of Christ becomes also the sacrifice of the members of her body. The lives of the faithful, our lives, our praise, our suffering, our prayers, our work are united to the life, praise, suffering, prayers, and work of Christ. In and through the Eucharist, we learn to offer our very selves and so day by day be brought through the mediation of Christ into unity with God and with one another. You know, the theme of Catechetical Sunday this year is, say the word and my soul shall be healed. These words are so familiar to us, aren't they? We say them right before receiving the body and blood of Christ at mass. And as we hear the words of the bishop or priest, behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We look at Jesus. We acknowledge our unworthiness and realizing we are in need of a Savior and cannot save ourselves, try as hard as we might, we give our entire selves over to him by saying, Say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is Jesus' deepest desire for us, that we be healed, saved, freed from our sins by the sacrifice of his body, indeed his entire being on the altar of the cross. To receive the Eucharist is to embrace with outstretched arms the Paschal mystery, to lose my life so that I might gain it, to be great by becoming the servant of all, setting aside all that would distract us on the way. In this way, then, Christ's victory and triumph over death is made present in the lives 
of those who participate in the Eucharist. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the whole world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people. For the leaders of Christ's church, who humbly serve with wisdom and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For nations torn apart by war and civil unrest, who seek peaceful alternatives to violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges, advocates, and civil servants who uphold the rights of the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially the seriously ill in our parish, Alex Yu, Catherine Saponi, Rose Corpus, Walter C. Stephan, James Fitzpatrick, and Vincent Schulte, and all those names on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who died, especially the recently deceased in our parish, Denora Portales, Christian Ramos, William Davis, Arturo Gonzalez, Cesario Young, and all those names on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Alex Sanchez, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
good brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, John and Ramon as auxiliary bishops, and all those who hold into the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands 
and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from these gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ. 
Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign. For those joining us from home, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. This week is Convocation Week. Please keep our priests in your prayers and check the bulletin for information regarding communion services for the week. And since it's Catechetical Sunday, I ask that all the catechists and any children who are part of the program and their parents please stand at this time to receive some special blessings. <laughs> Lord, with your paternal blessing, strengthen the decision of these servants of yours who wish to dedicate themselves to catechesis. Make sure that what they learn, meditating on your word and deepening your, the doctrine of the church, they strive to communicate it to their brothers and sisters. And thus, together with them, may they serve you with joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And for the children, Lord, with your paternal blessing, bless these children of yours who are preparing for faith formation. May they strive to communicate with joy what they learn from your word, and may they live the faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And for the parents, creator and merciful Lord, who wanted the family to be a sign of Christ and of the church, pour your blessing on these parents, so that united in love and prayer, they help each other and contribute to the needs of their children, and be for them testimony of faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I ask that all please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.